Hey guys, how's it going? So today actually we're going to be covering VAT, which is known as Vision Transformer, and we're going to be coding it from scratch so that we understand how it works. Uh, so essentially, Vision Transformer was a novel architecture that was introduced in 2020 uh, for image classification task, right? So the the architecture like Transformer was originally developed for natural language processing task, but then the authors ask themselves if like uh, the transformer could be used for computer vision task, then that's when they uh, came up with the VAT uh, paper. So VAT replaces the convolutional layer used in traditional computer vision uh, with a series of self-attention layer. So these attention layer essentially allows the model to capture global dependencies in the image, right? Whereas with CNN, uh, these models were known to capture local information. So one of the key uh, innovations that the author came up with was the patch embedding, which actually enabled VAT to work. So the idea behind patch embedding was to divide the image into small patches and flatten each patch into a one-dimensional vector before fitting it into into uh, the model. So because of these, uh, Transformer was designed uh, like uh, naturally for NLP task. So it works with sequences, like, you know, sentences. So that's why we needed this technique called patch embedding so that we can sequencify uh, the image. And we're gonna see how it works. As you can see from this image that we are looking at on the screen, you can see that the image of a dog and a cat is divided into these patches and these patches will be um, flattened uh, into one dimensional vector before we fit them into the model, okay? So VAT is definitely one of those architectures today that is um, achieving state of the art and is widely used. I think uh, some of the researchers today, they're adopting it across like image segmentation, instant segmentation, uh, I think also clip. So uh, language and vision uh, models are also uh, incorporating transformer. So it's quite interesting to see. But anyway, we will try to understand this and how it works. So without wasting any time, let's get into it. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to start with the, uh, the patch embedding uh, function, so, which I think it's quite crucial. So uh, essentially, we're going to be taking the images and we're going to be taking uh, n patches. So you can think of n patches as like the number of patches that we want to create from this image. So it's like uh, some sort of like a parameter that we define, okay? So uh, for instance, we can say that we want to create, we want seven patches. Uh, so let, let me show you the architecture again. So you can see that here, we have this image, right? How many patches do they have? So they have three by three, which means that they have nine patches. So that's like the parameter that they, they said that they want to have nine patches. So we are also saying that we want to have seven patches, which means that it's gonna be seven by seven because of we have a height, an image has a height and a width. So it's gonna be uh, 40, 40, uh, 49 um, patches across, across the image, right? Across uh, each image, that's what this means. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna take the image so that we understand the shape. I'm gonna say image dot shape. Essentially this is gonna give us the channel, um, actually the batch because of we have, we process this image in a batch, like, you know, maybe let's say we have like uh, 128 or 64 or something like that. So we're gonna say uh, channel of the image and we're gonna take in the height and we're gonna take in the width. So. Uh, because here we are working with MNIST data set, some of you might be familiar with it, but it is a grayscale uh, images. So the channel here will be one and the height will be 28 and the width will be 28. So uh, let me just do this images. So here our dimensions will be N by uh, one by 28 by 28. So that's what we're going to be having there. 
So when we apply the technique of uh, patch embedding, we have to make sure that the dimension of the height and the dimension of the width are the same. Uh, otherwise, this wouldn't work. So you will see in a second. So we need to say uh, the height equals to width. If this is not the case, I'm just going to say uh, patch. I'm just going to say patch embedding uh, requires the dimension of height and width. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, to be the same, okay? So that's what, um, that's the error message that we will erase if that's not the case. But now we need to create our patches. To create our patches, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create this box which is going to hold our patches. But for now, we're going to think of it as a box, you know, uh, that is going, that it has to hold all the patches of all our image in our data set. So I'm call, the reason I'm calling it a torch, uh, a box is because we have torch dot zeros, right? For now it's going to be zeros. Then it's going to be n, which represent the number of images within our data set. Then we're going to have n patches uh, squared, right? So I'm going to explain that. Actually, let me explain it now before we move on so that uh, I don't confuse you. So essentially, we're doing what we're doing here. Remember that we are saying that we want to take our image and we want to essentially um, break it into this number of patches. That's what we are saying, right? So it's like you can think of this image from this architecture. They took this image and they, they were like, we want to break this image into uh, nine patches. So which means that we're going to be having a three by three because we have to divide the height and we have to divide the width so that we get the number of patches, right? So that's what we're doing here. It's like we're saying this is going to be the number of patches, which is going to be 49. Then what we want to do is that each patch, each patch has to have like dimension. So for example, right, let's say we had an image like, uh, I'm going to say this was an image like so. Uh, maybe these ones you can think of them as like patches uh, or something like that. So we had this image and this you can think of this as a patch, right? As this patch. So we have how many patches here? We have nine patches, right? So this patch here has pixel. An image is made up of pixel. So each patch has a pixel. So now if I ask you what is the pixel of this one here that I highlighted now, right? So you have to tell me the pixel of this. So the whole entire image, for example, we know that it has a 28, 28, uh, 28 by 28. So which means that uh, across the height, right, across going all down, it is 28 pixel. Going all to the width, like to the right, it is 28. So it's a 28 by 28. But this one here also has its own uh, pixel right meaning that if we divide this into like three patches like three by three patches then this one is going to have its own uh, its own uh, uh, pixel that's what I'm saying here right? hope you understand so what we are saying here is that each pixel must have its own pixels right so what are those pixels so the pixels how we derive them is that we take 28 right and we're going to divide that because 28 is our height we're going to divide that by by the number of patches which makes sense right because you have the number of patches across the height and you have the number of patches across the width so this is what i'm going to do then what do we get we get four so we get four so what does this four mean it means that we have four pixels across our own patch so just to visualize this so you see this patch here it has its own pixel so the, the overall pixel of this image was 28, but we divided by three. So it just means that each pixel is gonna have a portion of that division. So that's what we also saying here, okay? So how, how does this thing look like? It's gonna be looking like height, width, then we multiply by the channel, then we say divide by and patches squared, right? This might be might be confusing how I'm writing it. 
but essentially it's still the same thing because you can do it one by one like you can do it like this and you can say height i'm going to divide you by by the end patches uh you can take the width and say i'm going to divide by uh end pitches you can do it like this it's fine i am just doing it in one call and it, it's, it's just much easier to 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 work with right but that's the same thing that's what we're doing here so now the question that you might be you must be asking yourself is that then what will be the output of this because of we're taking 28 by 28 and we're dividing it when you take 128 and you divide it by 7 you're gonna get 4 okay this is 4 we take another 28 because that's the width you divide it by another patch which is 7 what are you gonna get you're gonna get 4 that's fine our channel is 1 so it's gonna be 1 so this is gonna give us 16 so here from this that means that each patch is gonna have 16 right uh, dimension that's what it means so the overall dimension is gonna be n by uh, what is going to be this is gonna be 49 which represent the number number of patches we want in our image then what's going to be this is going to be the dimension of the image which is going the dimension of the patch which is going to be 16 or patches 16 pixels hope that that made sense uh, let me know if if it didn't but I, I tried to explain it in a much more uh, robust way because uh, so that you guys can get to understand so now we want to go through each our image yes we want to go through each images in our data set so that we get to we get to uh pitchify each image right so we're gonna say for idx which means that the index of the image and we're gonna take an image uh in enumerate uh right so then this is gonna be coming from images right then what are we gonna do in this case we're gonna say for for i in range so for each image we're gonna go uh, to all the number of patches in the image so it's gonna be n uh, patches then we're gonna say for j so this is an if inefficient code we we don't do it this way uh, honestly we don't do it this way when we're writing like very robust code but for ease of understanding i think uh this was how i think uh we should go about it because it is just easy to to create it to uh to brian uh i think he's the one who came up with this like to say that i think it makes it really makes sense if i use like vectors and to to um uh, to to do the, the 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 matrix multiplications and so it might not really make sense so that's why this for the sake of learning let's do it this way there's a lot of code i'll share the the code if you want to go use the the matrices and stuff like that but for now i think we're just gonna go with full loop so that we get to understand how it works okay so just just wanted to make sure that you you understand that uh, you don't see these uh triple for loops i know that they are not efficient so the goal is not to write efficient code but rather to understand how this stuff works, right so uh so uh so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go uh, for each image we're gonna go for the number of pages that we have then what we're going to do is that we're going to take in the we're going to create this variable which is called the patch then we're going to take the image and what we want to do is that we want to say across all the pages and we want to take the ith element which we're going to multiply it by the patch size right um so you can think of this actually we're going to have to have a patch size um I'm just gonna define it here, which I'm gonna explain everything. So I'm just not gonna. Uh, so the patch size. What's the patch size? So we know that we're gonna have to take the height and we're gonna have to divide by the end patches, right? So that's like the patch size. Does this make sense? It's like you're taking 28 and you're dividing it by seven, and you get the patch size. It's like the size of each of this box here what's the size so this is the same thing that i was trying to explain that's why we got 16 because we said 4 by 4 which is 16 okay so we're saying the patch size go all the way to uh, i plus 1 um, then we're going to multiply you by the patch 
size okay it's gonna be a page size does this make sense so actually okay I'll explain now um, so this is gonna be a uh, J times uh, page size then we're gonna be having J plus one by uh, page size which is going to be the same thing so that's fine so now your question might be but what are we doing what's this right so essentially we extracting a patch right we're extracting a patch so from this uh from this image that we have remember that an image has has an it is uh, this dimension is 1 by 28 by 28 and we're trying to extract these little box so your question might be but how are we doing it so essentially we're gonna take an image just like we're doing here and then we're gonna go to within the first because of we created this within this dimension we're gonna go from let's say this was zero because we are gonna look first this is gonna be zero by uh what's this it's gonna be zero by four right is that correct then we gonna is that correct right because of the page size it's going to be height by number of pages which is four then we're going to say zero times four is going to be four then we're going to say i plus one which is one times this is going to be zero which is zero by four sorry about this so this is going to be zero because if it's zero by four which is zero then this is going to be one by four which is going to be four right so then this it's uh, it's gonna be j which is also gonna be zero then this is gonna be zero so you can think of like within our image i know that might have been confusing i did not explain that well but we can think of like within our image we are saying that uh extract from the column you know like image has two dimension right like we think within our row and within our column extract the first page and that page uh, is going to be starting from the zeros all the way to four then you do the same thing you say uh go down now uh, okay, go down like this I, I don't know how to do that but you go down all the way to four something like that and then you're going to extract this box first right then when you come back this eye here when you go back to the uh, when you go back, which is going to be I, right? You're going to come back to this for loop because you have to loop for the number of pages, which is seven. So when you come back, it's going to be I. This will be will be one by four. So you're going to go to the next four. So it's going to be four, right? You're going to start here, four, all the way to, uh, what's this? I plus, I, I times, times, uh, patch size which is means that it's going to be one plus one uh plus one because of this will be one so it's going to be two times patch so it's going to be eight so you're going to go all the way eight so you can see that this thing is going to increase so next time you come back go to eight you go all the way to 12 so you go all the way just like that so you're gonna essentially extract all of these patches across the rows and across the column so that's what i think uh uh, this works right so um but this is a patch how do we then uh try to populate it within this box that's why i call this a box because it has to hold the part the patches but the question is how do we populate this especially given that we want to um flatten these things right we want to flatten the patches so we're going to take in the patches then we're going to take in the id idx of the image I'm gonna say for i by uh, patch number of patches, right? Then I'm gonna say plus j. We're gonna say this is equals to um, patch, right? Patch dot flatten. So we're gonna take this patch that we took, we extracted from our image. And we're gonna flatten it and we're gonna insert it inside our patch uh from this dimension like so so we're gonna go through all the the image and we're gonna extract the patches from the image and this function is gonna does it's gonna do that for us and when we're done 
essentially we can return the purchase right now what will the dimension be in this case essentially it will be n by 49 right because of that's the number of pages and we're going to be having 16 because we we flatten this so it's it's it's, it's fine so it's, that's okay but essentially that's how it works um so what i'll do is that uh, for for the sake of best practices what i'll do is that i'll share an efficient code with you guys uh, on my github so this will be more like a learning you can reference this then there will be a, a, an efficient code to do it if you like you want to apply it to an application or something like that uh, so this is not like the efficient way of doing it but it's like the most intuitive way to understand at least for me i think it's, it's much better to understand but uh, i hope this makes sense so for each box here we're gonna load in our page so across this image so that's why the idx this for loop will go this for loop will go this for loop will get another image it will go again to for all the patches it will go again for all the patches so that's what it will do so 49 uh overall so yeah that's all and let's go to to create our class which is gonna hold the our nn module so we're gonna say class uh, we're gonna call this one vat so uh, and then dot and then dot module oops uh, then we're gonna say i'm taking the channels of the image so this is going to be self uh, channel height width is going to be 1 by 20, 28 by 28 then we're going to take in the number of pages because we have to divide the, our image by 7 by 7 uh, pages then we're going to have a super constructor which is going to be super um, vit let me see this auto complete so what we're going to do is that we're going to create attribute so it's going to be a self self dot uh, channel height width equals to uh, channel height width which is this here it's going to do this like so so it's going to be 1 28 28 then we're going to say self dot n of pictures which is number of pictures and we have to make sure that um that the the height is divisible by the patch so for instance what i'm saying here is that we have to make sure that 28 um is divisible by seven right uh, so if this is not the case then we're just going to return an error so the input shape uh should be divisible by the by the by the patch Okay, so what we're gonna do inside here, we're gonna say accept, and we're gonna say channel height width, which is the variable that we took. But uh, at the first, at the first, um, first index, which is height, so we're just gonna say uh, modular, and we're gonna say n pages. So n pages. If this is equal to zero, then we know that uh, this height is divisible by 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 um by n pages so the point is just to make sure that we divide this without a remainder so we get a four we don't get like any some sort of like a decimal thing so that's the point okay so um i'm just gonna say comma if this is not the case uh then i'm gonna say uh input uh, shape uh, should be uh divisible divisible by in patches right so that's fine actually we can also copy the same thing that we did here so that we have to yeah if this is we're gonna start with this um basic okay there is a chain sort of that fine so i'm just gonna say um so because of we don't have the height and i don't want to define this so i'm just gonna remove this code 
if they don't want to do that i'll just copy this it's fine because i don't have the height and width and they're all inside this set so it's okay so what we can do is that we can just say uh two here just to say that uh, the width should also be divisible by by the number of patches okay that's that then what we're going to do is that we're going to have a forward function which essentially is going to take the self and the images and inside here what we're going to do is that we're going to call our patch building function which we know is going to return the patches so this is going to be a patch embedding which we're going to pass the image just like so we're calling this function below so we're passing the images and we're passing the i think this is going to be self dot and patches because we pass it the seven and we know what this function will return it will return this so i'm just going to make sure that i keep the dimension across our implementation so that we don't forget um our results by the end of the day so this is going to be images which is going to be input like so this will then implement this um the patch embedding let's linearly project our 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 patch dimension right so i just included this image here so that you kind of like get uh, to understand so there's this thing called linearly projection of latent patches so the idea is that we can map our our dimensions of each patch to some sort of like a hidden dimension right for instance we can choose like something like eight so which means that we will be mapping the 16 dimension patch that we we know we calculated to an eight dimensional patch using the and then dot linear layer so that's the point that we're going to do now so what are we going to do in this case is that i'm just gonna um come here so i think you know what i'm just gonna start with uh, i'm just gonna start with with like the software patches because i'm gonna need the patch size so i'm gonna say patch size is gonna be equal to i'm gonna take in the first channel which is gonna be not the first channel but the the height of the image right then it's gonna be divided divisible by the number of channels then i'm gonna take in so this should be one because of the height then i'm gonna take in the uh and what is it chw which is channel height width then but i'm gonna take uh the width this time around and i'm going to make sure that i'm also dividing it by the number of patches so what we just did here is that we took 28 and we divided it by seven so we have four by four so we can think of this as like the patch size so the patch it's like an image it also has a two dimension so it has like the height and width but it's so small so in this case it's four by four so height and width so that's what it is then what we're going to do is that we're going to create a linear map. So we're going to uh, call this a linear uh, map, which is then going to take the self dot input um, uh, input dimension, which is going to be int. Uh, we're going to take in the chw, which is going to be tunnel by so dot patch size then we take in the height and we multiply by uh self dot patch and this is going to be one because of this is going to be the width which is what we created now so essentially here what we do is that we have a channel right which is channel is going to be one because this is a grayscale image then we just calculated this we know that this is going to be four by four so it's going to be four by four and by the end of the day we have 16. it makes sense because of don't forget that's why i said we shouldn't forget our output so don't forget that the output that we got from the patch uh, patch embedding was 16. so because each pick each patch has um 16 dimension 
right so that's the input to our linear member that's gonna be the input right which makes sense so which means that we're gonna say self dot linear linear mapper okay then what we're gonna do in this case we're gonna say nn dot linear then we're gonna take the self input which is gonna be coming from the page embedding so this is gonna be self uh, self dot uh, input dimension right which is 16 and we're gonna be we're gonna be projecting it to our some sort of like our hidden layer right so we're gonna say self dot hidden layer so this is like a hidden layer that we define that we want uh, we want to project this to this hidden layer like so okay I hope that makes sense so now now uh, we can actually take this by the way uh, this linear mapper it applies this uh, linear across the last dimension it's something that you should know so it's gonna apply it to this so don't think of like oh wait we provided 16 here but then why why are we not taking consideration of these two so this this will apply across the last dimension which is that 16 so we're gonna say self dot we're gonna call that linear map, linear mapper so it's gonna be linear mapper then we're gonna pass it the patches that is coming from our page reading function and then this will then return the tokens that we can actually um tokens that we can basically return not a 10. Uh, let's do this. 10. Oops. I'll just go back. And tokens, like so. So, yeah, that's that. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the linear meta. So now we're going to look into the classification token. So if we take a look at our architecture, we can see that there's this thing called uh, CLS. So essentially to give you some context, as this token will actually capture information about other token. In this case, we call them patches, right? But in the NLP, they, you know, it's token. And so it's but pretty much the same concept. So essentially this will capture information about these other other tokens or patches, then we can actually use this because it has information or context about everything. We can use it um, for classification task, uh, or we can use it for another downstream task whereby we can adjust it with another special token or something like that. But it's a pretty clever um, technique which we use to do classification, I think. So we don't have to use everything, we can just use this um, CLS token. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do is that we're gonna try to add this uh, inside our page. So, so what's going to happen is that for now, I want you to remember this. We said that we have n page, we have forty nine patches, and each page while had a sixteen had a sixteen dimension. Then we we used this self hidden. We protected this these uh, patches dimension to this self hidden so now we're going to be having n 49 uh, 49 by 8 right that's what we having so far with our dimensions so now because we need to add the patch so now our dimension will change uh, the number of patches because we add, remember that we're adding this we're adding this actually we're adding to this patch. For now, we have 49, but we're gonna add the classification token, which means that we're gonna have 50. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna call this a uh, lenable uh, classification uh, token. Then what it's gonna take is that we're gonna say uh, self dot uh, class token, and then I'm just gonna say nn dot parameter, which is gonna be trainable. Then it's gonna be torch. Uh, dot rend. So I'm creating the dimension. So it's going to be one by self dot. Um, so it's like one, one, one thing. Then 
because we're adding one to the page, right? That's what I'm. That's why I'm saying one. So you can imagine that we have forty nine page, but we're adding another one, which is gonna be fifty. Then what is the dimension of this? So each each page has has eight. So which means that here we should be writing what hidden dimension also. Hidden uh, dimension like so. So now it becomes easy for us to add this self token to these tokens, right? So we can do that. So which means that we can say uh, tokens uh, is going to be equals to uh, torch dot stack dot stack. So you can think of like this: it's just stack these things. So torch dot v stack is going to stack vertically. I think there's torch dot h stack also. So there's the torch v stack, and it's going to be self dot class token. Then we take the tokens, uh, which is I, and I'm going to say, this is going to be uh, a list compression, by the way. So uh, where we, we, I think we're here because of these two, actually, I think it's going to be here. If I'm not mistaken, that it's going to be for I in range of length of tokens. Okay. So. I'm getting an error because it says this was not closed. Okay, it's closed now. But essentially what we're doing here is that we're going uh, to all the tokens, which is this dimension here, right? And then what we do is that we add, yes, to each, remember that to each, um, to each, it's, you can think of it as a sentence or maybe like an image, right? I think of it this way, to each image, we need to add a classification token, right? So let me show you an example. So you see here, this is an image and it has a class, right? You can see it, right? So here, because we have an image, this n refers to a badge. So what we need to do is that we need to add a class token to all the images. And that's why here you see we have this volume, okay? And this essentially will do the trick for us, okay? So now um, I'd like us to look into the the positional embeddings. So we have page embedding. Okay, we can do it here. It's fine, right? So yeah, um, so we're gonna say def position now embedding. Okay, so. Uh, before I start with positional embedding, just to give you some context behind this. So essentially, we can think of positional embedding as like, uh, so far, the model does not know, like, this, the, the structure or, like, um, where does each patch lie, right? So we need to give each image or each patch here and, and some sort of, like, um, a, a position that, okay, this is a position, you are the first, you are the second, right? I mean, it makes sense because when you look at the image, this image, like, you know, this is like here, this is here. Each image has a, has a, has a position. Otherwise, if this was, was not the case, then you can, you can see that then the image is going to be jumbled around, right? It's just going to be uh, squashed around, right? So we will never understand the image. So it's the similar thing with the model. So it has to get the position of each, of each image. Where does that image lie? Not image rather page. Where does that page lie? So we do this and also in in uh in NLP task, you know. So we try to give each uh from a sentence, we try to give each word a position within that sentence. Because if this was not the case, then the model will not know where something lies. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So um here we're gonna have uh, a sequence. Essentially, this is gonna be the sequence length. And I will try to explain this in such a way that you actually understand the positional embedding, positional embedding today. So what's going to happen is that we're going to be having the results, which is going to be results equals to torch we create in this box, which we're going to fill. Then we're going to be having off once, and it's going to be sequence length. So uh, by D, before we continue, some of you might be asking yourself, but what is this? What does sequence length mean? And what is this dimension? So the sequence length, essentially, you can think of it as like the number of patches, uh, right? In our case, it's gonna be, it's gonna be 49. I don't think we have to, 
I don't think, uh, before I forget, so let me just give you the dimension here because I like to keep the dimension all the way. So this is gonna be N, now it's gonna be 50, now it's gonna be eight. So that's what we have so far, right? So what will happen here is that I don't think we have to embed the plus token because of it's the first, but we'll see. But for now, let's just think this is, uh, we have 49. Then because of that's the sequence, you can think of it as like the, the sequence like from an image how many pages do we have then this is going to be the dimension i think it's going to be eight in our case if i'm not missed yeah it's going to be eight so that's what we have right that's what thing that i want you to keep in mind for now then um essentially what we're going to do is that we're going to create this torch dot one so which means that it's going to be given the shape of this uh it's just like filled with ones uh, that's what that means. Then we're gonna say for uh, for i in uh, range, right? Then we're gonna go for sequence, right? Sequence length. Um, and we're gonna go for the dimension range. For, so it's gonna be for j in range of d, okay? Then what we're gonna do is that. This is like the tricky part. So I want to explain it in such a way that you understand. But um, so this is and this is this is we doing I'm doing it this way so that you don't forget how how positional embedding work. So um, so what we're going to do is that we're going to say result, which means that we're going to take this uh, this this box here. We're going to have to fill it now with like the positions. So we're going to take the I and at the J uh, element, then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna say equals to NP dot sign. So you know what, before I continue, because I think I might confuse you here, so I'm just gonna try to uh, save an image inside our directory so that you understand actually, because uh, if I try to explain without using the equation, it will be like a, a black box. So I think it's better if like, um, I, I pull up this equation here so that we both reference it. That way uh, it becomes much better and there is it here. So now this is what it happens. Right? So at the, what we need to do is that I essentially, we can think of it as it represent the position within our sequence. Then J represent the, 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 the position at our dimension, right? So this is I which means that given a sequence, this is like the position within a sequence. So it's a specific patch. Think of it that way. Then uh, this J represent the dimension um, of that of that patch because of each patch has this dimension of eight. We know that. So now we say for each patch for this dimension, this is what we're going to do. So what are we going to do? So we're gonna apply this 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 equation here. So if j is even, then we apply the sine. If j is odd, then we apply the cosine. So I will show you how we do that. Then, but we're gonna take j divided by then uh, ten thousand squared by the dimension of d. So that's what we're gonna do, right? So um, I know that might have been confusing, but what I'll do is that I'll try to write it down so that you understand. So what we're going to do is that we're going to say np dot sign, then we're going to take i because of that's what we're seeing here at the equation. So we take i, then it looks like then they say we need to divide by 10,000 if I'm not mistaken. Then this 10,000 will need to be, uh, let's look at the equation again, will need to be squared by the uh, j divided by the dimension of, of t. Okay, so this 10,000 essentially will need to be uh, squared by j, then it's going to be divisible by d, okay? Uh, uh, so I know this might be confusing, but let me just iterate. So what we're doing here is that it's, it's, it's just an equation and it's just what we're implementing there. So uh, we take i, which is, we can think of this as a specific patch because we, we're looping for all the sequence, then we divide by 10,000 squared by j, j is this dimension here of this, uh, the dimension, the specific 
value at the dimension of the patch, then we divide it by D. So D essentially is the dimension is like eight. So it's like one divided by eight. But here you can see that J will continue to grow, but you can see that what we're we trying to do, we're trying to create a, some sort of like a sequence, if you think about it, and uh, these things try to capture how far away each token is. Like for instance, this token, um, if we look at our architecture, this dog face here, it's far away from its feet. So there's a distance. So this essentially, you can see that there's a distance and these techniques here, the author, and how they did it this way was to capture that distance, whereas they don't like add too much value to the to the tokens, uh, because now it, to the to the tokens to the patches themselves, because it was gonna it was gonna pollute the the, the token uh, dimensions. But anyway, so we know that we need to apply this sign according to the equation when it's even. So we're gonna say when j essentially is divisible by two and this essentially is zero what we need to do is that we need to then if this is not true we just need to then apply the odd so it's going to be np uh, dot cosine so i'm just going to try to show you the image like so which is going to be this one so the cosine essentially this is we see that we take j minus one so that's what we're going to do so we're going to say uh, b is going to be uh, I right divisible by I think it's going to be 10,000 again then this 10,000 I hope that's 10,000 uh, then we're gonna say uh, this will be J uh, minus 1 right then it's going to be divisible by D like so so I'm just going to wrap these two into brackets so that this D so that this D here divide this so but anyway what we're doing here is that we're saying i which is an element of an i sequence then we take 1000 then we square it by uh, 10,000 we square it by j j representing the j's element then minus one then we divide by this d which is represent the 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 dimension of like this is eight right and that's what we're doing so i feel like this way is much more intuitive at least for me, it was easy for me to kind of like grasp like positional embedding. And even if like someone asked me to write it and like without seeing this, I'll definitely, I think I'll be able to understand because it looks like we're focusing on the sequence, um, sequence element and the dimension element, then you know this equation, then you're fine. And that's like positional embedding. So it is, so when sometimes when people write this in like vectors and using PyTorch, it can become quite difficult to grasp. This is definitely not an efficient way of doing it, but I feel like it's much better for people to understand. And that's why I decided to kind of like go with this way. So yeah, I hope you guys um, get to understand it also the way I understood it. But that's, that's like uh, our positional embedding. So now we have this, we're retaining this results, which is going to be having um, 49, 49 by eight. So this is what we're going to be having here, uh, depending on if like we passed in the classification, even if we pass it, we're going to pass it, it might not make too much difference because it's always at the, at the, at the starting, at the starting, this is where it is. So for each sentence, we can see, or for each image, we can see that um, it's always at the starting, starting uh, position. So it might not make any huge difference, but that's that. So now I would like us to move to the next component and try to understand how it works. So before before we continue and move to the to the encoder block, which we're gonna start here. So I think let's just add uh, the positional uh, positional embedding to the to our class VAT class. So we're just gonna go inside here. So after the lendable parameter what I'm going to do, so I'm going to create this positional uh, embedding, uh, embedding, so what we're going to do here is going to say self dot pause uh, embedding, embedding, embed or something like that, so it's okay, then I'm going to say nn dot uh, 
parameter which is going to be parameter and it's going to be torch enter which is this is going to be trainable so it's going to be uh, let's go and get that name which is positional embedding uh, it's going to be this right and what did we say we said that we're going to pass it the the sequence right which is 49 and the dimension so which means that here essentially what we need to pass is going to be self dot n patches which is seven then we're gonna square this to make it 49 then we're gonna plus one right i'm just gonna add one because of that class class token right remember that we had 50 here because of that class token because we apply anyway we apply the positional embedding after after we have added the class so it's fine so where were we yeah this is where we were so i'm gonna say self dot hidden dimension this is what we spoke about which was uh eight here so this is what we did so that's fine so now what we need to do is that we need to add the positional embedding inside this but before we do that let's just say where is it i'm just gonna go here okay there is it here so i'm just gonna say self dot that dot require script it's gonna be false and what we're gonna do is that we gonna add positional embedding inside here so that i'm gonna say embedding before we add it i just want to explain that so far the results that we got the were this dimension which means that it was 49 by 8 so what we need to do now is that we need to this is this is the same as this dimension here that we got it's like 50 by 8 so actually this is supposed to be 50 because of we added one here so we're gonna say 50 because i, I said 49 because I, uh token was going to be the first anyway so but now since we added it it's fine anyway that's that's this right so now what we have to do is that we need to we have this we have this dimension 50 by 8 so we can see that our function we have to apply it for all the images and refers to a batch right so that's what we need to do so now to do that what we're going to do is that we're going to say pause uh in there which is going to be in there equals to self dot pause in there dot uh, repeat which is to essentially saying that repeat this and multiple times uh, and n times because we want to repeat this remember that um, yes n is not defined so we can get n from the images I think it's going to be n by c by height by w which is close to images then we can use this n right here so this makes sense right so we are repeating this n times so you can think of now we're going to be having n by by 50 right by 8 that's what this means and then now we can actually now we have the same dimension so we can say output equals to tokens right plus so we're adding a position to our to patches and now we're going to say power starting back so this makes sense right we're adding that position so now you can think that each patch so let's go to the image again each patch now has a position so it the model will know where this position where this patch lies i hope that makes sense so um that's that so now i think it's, it's fine for us to go to the to the to the encoder so in the encoder we have what we call layer normalization so in the original paper of like the, the transformer after each so each layer has a sub layer so a sub layer is like the multi-head the multi-layer perceptron so what happened was that in that architecture we apply the layer norm after each sub layer right but 
uh, current like most implementation like in the in a recent papers what they do is that they apply layer normalization before each sub layer okay so yeah but but that's like essentially what we try to do is that we try to normalize uh, the patches in the dimension so it's gonna be it's gonna apply we're gonna be applying the layer norm across the last dimension so you can think of like we're gonna set 50 by 8 uh, to have uh, zero mean and uh, standard deviation of one so this is gonna be uh, normalized there. so zero mean and std of one okay so if you don't understand these and the intuition behind layer normalization i'll definitely encourage you to watch my transformer video it's quite i think it's two hours i explain the intuition the why why we're we doing this what's the idea and i explain some of these things uh so that everyone can understand so the main goal here is just to kind of like understand the vit architecture so uh, i i uh if you guys don't understand this maybe you want me to create videos around the basics or something like that you guys can let me know but just for your reference you can check my video and it kind of like explain these things in a much more deeper way so uh then after the layer norm we're gonna have the multi head uh self attention so you can think of this as like we're gonna we have this things called um a query key and and value and we have to apply those things for each uh patch for each weight uh, i'm just gonna use patch and weight intangibly because of uh, i think it, it's best if like you can some of you might know like uh transformers from your natural language processing so um using them intangibly it make it, it might make it easy for you guys to understand so that's what i'm gonna do but anyway we have query and key and value so what we need to do is that we going to take each patch right or wait and then it's going to be having a query key and value right and then the query uh, of this patch will then be applied across all the other patches so essentially the dot product between the query and with all the other with all the other keys will be applied right then this thing we're going to be dividing by the by the square root of eight so this everything that i'm explaining we're going to do it just that i want to give you a context then we, what does this multi-head mean so this multi-head it means that this query and key and value will then be uh divided into the dimension of this right will be divided into like number of heads uh, the, the main idea was to enable their model to have like better context, right? So that's what we're gonna do. So uh, if you don't understand, just stick with me, and I'm I'm gonna make sure that you understand by by the end of this. So I'm just gonna erase this. So creating our multi-head self-attention, uh, I'm gonna call this multi-head attention, and it's gonna take in from the nn dot uh, modular. Then what we want to do is that we're going to create this constructor, which is going to take, actually, that's correct. Uh, it's going to take the self, then we have super, that's also correct, thanks, tab 9. Then what we're going to do is that we're going to say self D equals to D. Then uh, we have self, uh, self dot um, n heads, right, self dot n heads, right, which is going to be equals to n heads like so. This is not correct. Oh, tab nine, tab nine. I want to call this D. So anyway, uh, before we continue, this is like uh, the number of heads and this is our dimension. That's what we passed in here. So before we continue, we need to make sure that this dimension is divisible by the number of heads. Then I'll explain to you what these heads and dimension mean in a second. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to asset and make sure that this D essentially is divisible by N heads. I'm going to use a modular because um, you can then if it, this is equals to zero, then we know that it's divisible. Else, if this is not the case, what we can say is that uh, we can say uh, dimension. Uh, actually, I'm going to make this a, an F string so that I can actually use that bracket. So it's going to be uh, dimension, right? Uh, which is the dimension of B, right? is not that's what i'm gonna do is not divisible divisible 
by in heads. So right, that's what right here. So I'm just gonna make sure that's just for readability. That's what we're gonna do. But now this is where I'm gonna try to explain to you in a much more detail. So what we're we doing here is that we know that each page, yes, each page is gonna be having um query, it's gonna be having key, it's gonna be having value. These you can think of these dimensions, right? Is things that essentially help uh, the model to capture context about other other pictures. That's how it works, right? So uh, that's why we said like the square will apply to other keys. So, but that's how we capture the context. For now, just know that. But then we need to then apply this across n number of heads, meaning that each this each of these key and query and value will have to be divided by this number of heads because that's that way we get to capture even much better context right that's what uh, according to, to to the experimentation that has been done that's what we can observe right so we can even capture more better context when we're using this technique called multi-head so now uh what we do is that we take d dimension i'm gonna say d head because so we take the dimension and we're gonna divide it by uh, i'm gonna say int just for make sure that this is robust so then we're gonna divide it by n heads right just to iterate the dimension of these key query and value are divided into like this head so for example let's assume that our d in this case was eight and our head here like we defined it was two right so what do we get we get four what does this four mean it means that our dimension was divided into two because of that's the number of head so which means that we have a four here so which means that essentially this linear the query here will be having something like this it will be having four then it will come again and have another four like say that's the dimension query it will come again and have another four does that make sense when you add these up it's still going to give you eight because that's the original dimension it makes sense but then we divided them into number of heads okay that's what this stuff means and yeah i hope that gave you a, a better context so as i'm going to still come i'm going to explain them in the more detail again so that you get to solve for your understanding but for now let's just continue uh, so that we get to explain as we see the code in in in, in the implementation so we're going to create an n module list because we want to linearly project these uh, into number of heads so we're going to create an nn linear so we're going to be nn dot linear so i said that the query and the key is going to have the dimension of four right we divided this dimension so which means that here we have to pass this four so I'm ca i call it d head so we're going to pass it here so it's going to be d head yes right but you are definitely right this is one four and we said that we need how many four we need two of them so what we're going to do is that we're going to say for um for this inside this this means that i'm not going to use it in my full loop so for this inside this range of um we're going to take self i think we're going to use this head right so it's going to be self dot um n hits so this makes sense what is n head it is two so now we're going to have two of these so you can think of we're gonna have the first four by four, right? Which is query, then we're gonna have another four by four, right? You can see that we divided eight into two. So now we have the first dimension, the second dimension. So that's what it means essentially by multi-head. And uh, thanks tab nine. I hope you didn't make a mistake this time. So this is self.k. Now the same thing with the v. Nope, no, okay, there is it. Thanks tab nine. So this is Cool. so we have this query k and uh, value so that's fine so what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna try to define this self dot head so it's gonna say self dot uh, d head it's gonna be equals to d head so it's gonna be something that we're gonna use in the forward pass and we're gonna have the self dot soft max like so then this is going to be equal to mn dot softmax 
Information plus to minus one, and we're gonna have this four class. So this is gonna be interesting because we're going to, we're not gonna use like an optimized code like the way people do it. Like uh, like I said, I'll share the optimized code so that you can use that one in production. But this will be more like you trying to understand see what's really going on inside these uh, when we use these like uh, matrices and stuff like that. What's really really going on, right? So it's much better to understand. So we have self, and we're gonna take in the sequences. We know that what this means. So this means like it's just the number of patches. So a sequence, it's gonna be having n by uh, by I think by the sequence length, which is gonna be fifty. If I'm not mistaken, then it's gonna be token dimension, which is gonna be eight, right? So we can I just write to write them like this, just for consistency. So that you guys get to know actually, you know uh, where we are, because that's what we've been following along. So it's going to be n by actually not sixteen, sorry eight. Uh, then what we're going to do is that we gonna try to because of this is the dimension, right? This was the eight. Um, this was the eight that we spoke about. So what we want to do is that we wanna divide this by right? eight into d heads does that make sense right so that's what we're gonna do is that we wanna apply this we wanna we wanna divide this because each page has this dimension let me repeat this I, I did explain but I'm gonna repeat right so we said that each page and we know we have been talking about this the entire video we said that 50 represent the number of patches okay and we say that each page has dimension of eight but now we are saying that that dimension of eight for each page will be divided into like uh, the heads, right? So this way we get to apply this self query. I said that each page has this self query and value, right? So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna say results equals to this empty stream. So we're gonna say for sequence. So now what you can think I'm doing is that I'm getting a sequence. Um, from this thing so i'm getting a sequence like patch like so right so a sequence of patches okay then we're gonna say um sequence results like so so it's gonna be uh, sequence results like so it's gonna be that um so it's gonna be for head in range Okay, and we're gonna say self dot and heads, which is like so, which we defined self dot and heads, which is number of heads, like uh, this is the one that we're calling. So that's that. So let me take a pause. We have a sequence, and we take that sequence, then we have a loop. We're gonna loop through, then we're gonna say um, query, which is gonna be query equals to I'm gonna call this query mapping just so that it does not conflict with that the article that we defined then it's gonna be query mapping it's gonna be self dot query then we're gonna pass in the head here does that make sense because we have this head right so we said that here we have two and we know that within this we have these linear two of these linear uh, linear projected of these queries so we have two of them right with this dimension so we're saying that give us the first one because we are looping through the number of heads so this is going to give us the first one then we're going to say um k dot mappings then this is going to be equal to self dot k then we're going to do the same thing which is head um then we're going to be uh, v dot mapping which is going to be self dot v and this is fine and what we're going to do now is that we need to apply all of these okay so we're going to say sequence equals to sequence right given the sequence um we want to apply the head so given the sequence we want to apply remember that the sequence has a dimension of eight right 
And we know that the query and the value have a dimension of four because of that's what we said. We said that we want to apply the eight across across the number of heads. That's why we're looping through the heads. But now the sequence is eight. So how do we do that? So we have to subset. We have to like take four from that eight of this sequence. That's what we're doing here. So it's going to be self dot d head, right? That makes sense. So what we're doing here is that because we're looping through, it's going to be head, right? Multiply by uh, I think this was supposed to be a range. So this is a range, so this is gonna be zero. So just gonna write all of these so that you guys can see. So we have zero and one because we're going two times. That's what this self head does. We have two inside here. Then we have zero and one. That's how many loops we're gonna go. So here we're saying zero times um, D head, which is gonna be zero. So D head, essentially it is four. So it's gonna be starting at four, okay? I think it has to go all the way to four. Yes, it has to go all the way to four because we take four from the sequence. It has eight. We spoke about this. It has eight, and that's why we're dividing. We want four. So that means I'm going to take this um, head, which is zero. I'm going to add plus one so that we go to four. We go all the way to four. Then here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to multiply this by um, self dot uh, the head. Does this make sense? So That's, that makes sense, right? So we took the sequence across the sequences. Uh, the second dimension we apply within the first four. This is eight. Within the first four, this is what we, we, we extract that sequence, the first four. We extract the first four sequence. I hope that makes sense. Maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm confusing you by explaining this way, but uh, I hope you guys honestly do understand. So we're gonna take the query, the query. Now we're applying this, right? So it's gonna be self uh, query mapping. It's gonna be that. Then it's gonna be k mapping. It's gonna be uh, sequence. Then it's gonna be v mapping. Then it's gonna be um, sequence again. Okay. So <clears throat> we're gonna go again. We're gonna go. The for loop will go again because we extracted four. We did not extract everything. So we extracted four. And we need to extract another four, which is eight. So we know that each patch has a dimension of eight. We know this. This is what we do. So it's gonna extract four, it's gonna extract four. Okay. And this query mate, this query mappings, they're expecting a four dimension. We know this. They're expecting a four because of this is what we define them here. We said we must take a four because we divided dimension by d head. So they're expecting a four. So we're giving them a four. Like by four, I'm simple meaning that the dimension of the patch has been divided into number of heads. So in this case, it's four, right? That's what I mean by four. So hope you guys make sense. Now we apply the attention, right? The attention is well known. Maybe self dot soft max. Then we're gonna be taking the query, which is this guy here. Then we're gonna multiply it by the k dot t transpose, which is k dot transpose. Uh, this is like uh, your typical matrix multiplication because you want to make sure that the row and the column, the column and the row of the second vector, like they are the ones that get multiplied. Then, then you're gonna be left with the dimensions that did not multiply, and that's gonna be your results. So that's what the matrix multiplication does. Then here we're just gonna scale. Uh, we're gonna take the dimension of this d dot head. Um, then we're gonna square it by 0 0.5. Uh, yeah, some people apply the square root of uh, the square root of what is it? the dimension of keys, uh, still the same. So that's that. Then we're gonna say the sequence uh, results uh, that append. I'm gonna append the that append because we need to get the context. So it's gonna be uh, attention, right? Uh, by dot product, so why am I not doing it dot product? This is gonna be V, like so. So this is supposed to be dot product like so. That makes sense. So now, <clears throat> I'm gonna explain again, 
but for now let's continue then we're gonna come here and say the results the results uh, dot append we're gonna append we're gonna say torch dot hash tag this is yeah hash stack and we're gonna say h stack h stack the sequence results sequence results then when we are done we're gonna return something here so for now i'm just gonna pause before we get very far so that's that so essentially what we're doing is that we're gonna get a sentence right we're gonna get a sequence and for each sequence uh we're gonna project this right that's what we did then we're gonna store the results inside this uh sequence results okay um some of you might be like but wait you said that we apply a patch some of you might be like we said we apply the query and the value across the patch but why are we taking the sequence is it like a sequence um i think this is supposed to be is it like a sequence uh number of patches are we are we not doing this for number of patches because of we we, we said that this is going to be having so this is going to be having the dimension of uh n by 50. so essentially here we're taking we're taking 50 by 8. that's what we're doing so what's going to happen is that it's still going to be patch but we are applying it that's why here it's more like we're playing it in a batch way so across all the sequence for each yes across all the sequence for each patch right for each patch apply this apply for each patch apply across this dimension that's what we say so i know that i said for each patch but this you can think of it as like from this 50 and 8 right you can think of it that way so i hope it makes sense I, I really do because i know this might be confusing because i said that we are playing it for each patch yes we are playing it for each patch it's just that it's more like they are grouped so it's like they are grouped because we're taking each sequence then for each sequence we say that for all the patches we want to do this we want to extract the four right so that's what I think happens there. So, um, so that's what does that. We don't gonna apply the results. Uh, then what we're gonna do then is that we then append the, the results into the results, the main results. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna have to return now, which is gonna be touch dot cut. Um, then it's gonna be torch then we're gonna unsqueeze this we're gonna create a dimension which is gonna be a torch for unsqueeze i don't know why i'm not okay unsqueeze there is it here then we say r dimension of zero so where is this r coming from it's coming from this list comprehension for loop so it's gonna be for r in results okay so that's that um so I know that, okay, maybe I did not explain this and some of you might be confused. Okay, why, why does this hate stack do? So essentially we have this results, right? So we have the attention and we have the value, then we're gonna append it into this results. So this is gonna be holding the results for each sequence. Then we're gonna, we hate stack this, we horizontally stack these um, into the results inside here. Then we concatenate them by we concatenate them from this list that we because we said we are gonna squeeze them then we concatenate the results so that we get the right dimension so that's that's what we do it there so yeah i think that's that so let's continue so coming to the encoder so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna create a class which we're gonna call encoder VAT. vat yeah that's what we're gonna call it encoder VAT, then we're gonna say nn dot module and then 
uh, essentially you can think of this as like we trying to bring uh, all the components that we did like um, we're trying to build an encoder that's what we're doing this the part that is here on this architecture here then um, the multi-layer perceptron the norm you see that the norm is behind the multi layer attention the norm is behind the multi-layer perceptron so that's what the encoder is going to be we're trying to uh, construct so we have already the building blocks already so we're just gonna pass, uh, pass them through so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna create uh, this init then we're gonna say uh what's the self we're gonna take the hidden dimension uh we're gonna take the n hits right the number of hits we're gonna take the multi-layer uh ratio which is going to be four um then what we're gonna do is that we're just gonna pass in the encoder see i don't think my spelling for encoder is actually correct so i'm just going to change it uh sorry about that so it's going to be e here it's going to be e and i think here we're supposed to take in the self then going to be init like so i think i'm also making a mistake now i don't know why but that's fine um then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna say self dot hidden equals to hidden. Then we're gonna say self dot number of hits. It's gonna be number of hits uh, as we passed it through there. Then, as you can see from the architecture, we see that we effectively have a normalization. Uh, I did explain the normalization. Then, then what we do is that we're gonna say self dot norm, which is the first normalization. It's gonna be and then dot layer uh, norm then we pass in the hidden dimension then after that from looking at the architecture we have this thing called multi-head attention which we just did so it's this uh, component right there so uh, we're gonna say self dot multi-head self attention which is equals to self uh, actually we don't have to say self because it's not defined here but it's within this function or within this class so i'm just gonna copy this uh, and um we're just gonna write it like so then inside here we know that it takes in it takes in the dimension and the number of hits which is what we're gonna pass in inside here it's gonna say hidden dimension then uh, we're gonna say number of hits which was in our case was two and the dimension was eight at that time so <clears throat> looking at our architect again we can see that we have this residual connection which we're going to apply in our forward pass but for now let's implement this norm i will explain what is a residual connection because i don't think i did explain it so we're going to say uh self dot norm 2 because um uh, that's what we have i'm just going to copy and paste i think like copy and pasting is going to make it easier for us so that we don't have a lot of bugs uh then we have multi-layer perceptron Oh, look at uh, tab 9, it's already done it for me. Then we have uh, MLP equals to NN.sequential. Sequential. Then what we do is that we're going to have NN.linear. So NN.linear is supposed to take in the hidden dimension. And then we're going to have MLP ratio multiplied by hidden dimension. Then we're gonna have a gale, which is an activation function. Uh, a gale, like so, right? Then we're gonna have the output layer, which is gonna be nn dot linear, uh, which we're gonna take in the this here, the multi layer hidden as input, and the output will be the output that we want to be. I think we need to be consistent because remember that we're gonna have a residual connection so we need to make sure that these inputs and outputs we maintain the same output and for example inside here the multi-head uh the multi-head attention also inside here we're still maintaining the same dimension by the way i did not mention the same dimension but we're still maintaining the same dimension because we have to add the input to this output so if we go to the vat architecture 
you can see that after the multi-head, we're going to take the input and we're going to add it to this output. So we can't do that if the dimension are not the same. So here the output should be this. Uh, so we're maintaining the output across the whole entire implementation. So we're maintaining the, the dimension, I mean to say. And here we're going to be having a forward and we're gonna be, uh, it's going to be soft. It's going to take an input, which is the input. Uh, then we're going to be saving, uh, we're going to be having output and we're going to take the input because this is a residual connection. Essentially, residual connection, uh, essentially what we do is that we take the input or then we add it to the output of the sub layer. So uh, you're going to hear this concept a lot, residual connection, because it essentially enables us to build more powerful models and models that can be even longer, meaning that we can train very deep uh, neural networks. So that's, that's the idea essentially, but it's very, very powerful concept, especially in, uh, in deep learning, uh, uh, in the whole deep learning uh, uh, ecosystem. So um, so we, so in, you're not gonna see this, especially in my video of the transformer, because um, norm, we applied the norm after the multi-head, but in this case, we applied before. So the recent papers, they follow this uh, uh, paradigm uh, because of based on observation, it has been uh, observed that it actually this doing it this way, it performs much better. So what we do is that we're gonna take the input and we're gonna normalize it, apply the layer norm, then we pass it throughout the multi-head, then we have the residual connection, then we get the output, and that output is gonna be added to the output of the multi-layer perceptron dot multi-layer perceptron which is this component right here so that's what we're applying then also before we apply that we just need to make sure that we apply the layer norm which is going to be layer norm 2 we pass the output inside here so as you can see that's that so here we're adding the output instead of the input because of that's what we're doing you can see that the output here of the multi-head will be added uh, as to the output of the multi-layer perceptron so that's what we're doing here so it's pretty pretty uh easy to understand i think so uh then it's going to be the output like so okay so this is the encoder vit block so we can essentially replicate this as much as we want uh in our vit uh in our vit uh implementation so let me show you this so you can see here on this diagram there's that n times can you see that so that n times means that this entire block here you can replicate it as many as you want so we're gonna do that so what's gonna happen here is that we can have um we can actually create i think we're gonna so we had positional embedding but i'm thinking of creating the the transformer block encoder block just kind of like be consistent with my words so i'm gonna say uh, encoder block so the goal here is that we want to replicate this multiple times so we've already used this and that we've already used this patch embedding positional embedding so yeah we pretty much uh, have come a long way uh, so yeah so let's do this self dot blocks which is going to be equal to nm dot modular list so every time you think of like replicating something multiple times uh we're gonna use this uh nm dot modular list let's say you want to replicate like your nm linears your sub layers or anything like that and multiple times you use this uh nm um nm module list so inside here what we can do is that we can take uh I think we can take the encoder VAT, right? That makes sense. Then we can take it like so. Then we can actually pass it the dimensions that we said we're gonna pass it. So the first dimension was the hidden layer, right? Then the first time the second dimension was the number of heads, if I'm not mistaken. Then we're gonna replicate this. I think the number of blocks, which the number of blocks will be the parameter that we specify, then it's going to be for 
the bad in sub range of uh, n max. So hidden, hidden dimension, I think this is supposed to be a self dot that. And this is supposed to be self dot that. This, we never actually specify this, so I'm just going to pass it as an input here. So it's also going to be having two. Okay. Um, then I'm going to pass in like, we never had a hidden. Do we have a hidden dimension? No, we never had it. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to have uh, a heat. We never had it. So this self dot hidden, we did not define it. We just passed it there. So we're just going to say n dot hidden. Uh, no, no call it. See, I think it's fine. Hidden. Then we're going to define it in the constructor. Anyway. So, uh, so it's going to be that. Then we're going to be having output equals to 10. So the output dimension is because we, we're doing in the mlist classification. So we want uh we we have 10 i think 10 classes if i'm not mistaken and that's what we have um so what we're gonna do now is just gonna create these self dots of the pages self dot blocks then we're gonna say self dot n block which is blocks and we're gonna say self dot n hits and the n hits is not defined so it's gonna be uh, n number of hits which I'm gonna put inside here it's fine uh, we said n hit is gonna be two then what we left with I think it is the self dot hidden dimension self dot hidden dimension is gonna be hidden dimension like so get which is matches here so this matches what we always had here. So we have been using the right thing. It's just that we never actually got to define them. That was the point. So now that we have defined them, and here we can think of like this encoder block. You can think of this guy here. We have replicated this into two times. As you can see from the architecture, we have this n by here. So we can replicate this as many as we want. OK? Um, so that's that. So the only thing now we're going to do after our positional embedding, let's scroll up. So this is, we edit the pause, right? So does that make sense? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to try to loop through the transform block. So it's going to be for block in itself dot blocks there's going to be output uh, equals to block right then we give it the output right? and the output will be coming from what will be the output coming from is the output supposed to be coming from here but before we do that because okay it's coming from this right this is the output then we pass it inside here because we edit the positional embedding yes so this is what we added so this is fine then we edit inside here for each for each yes for each block i just want to make sure that i make sense of everything so that i'm 100 percent sure with my explanation um yeah i think that's all so we're looping through for all these blocks that we added, then we pass in the output that we got here. Okay, so the only thing that's left is that we need to utilize this output dimension, and that is because we need to make the classification we're using the classification token, then we should be fine. Okay, so let's continue then. So, um, please remember that, guys. Um, we're maintaining the same dimension across all these uh all these implementation right like i said that the 
main goal was that obviously within these blocks we have things such as residual connection so we still maintain the same um, the same dimensions okay so what are we going to do in this case before we start implementing implementing this i think let's just start here uh with the classification um classification which is going to be mlp and we're going to say self uh dot mlp uh so i just want to iterate that this mlp is actually different from the mlp that we implemented inside the encoder vat so inside the encoder Yes, uh, we did implement the, the MLP, but that was within the encoder. The one that we're implementing now is for the classification, okay? So I just want to make sure that you understand that. So it's going to be equals to mn dot uh, sequential. Then inside here, we're going to have this nn linear, right? And from this, we're going to say self dot hidden dimension that's what we're going to take that's what this this output should give us here right um then we're gonna have the output dimension that's what um that's what we're gonna be having here because this is output because i think we have 10 classes inside inside our um, our mnist data set then we're gonna have soft max like so soft max um then dimension equals to minus one right and we apply that so now uh, the question is we need to apply this right only on the classification token is that correct yes so which means that from this we need to extract the classification token right so what we're going to do is that we're going to say output. So I'm just going to hear uh, classification token. I hope you still remember that classification token because this video, I think it's quite long now. So some of the details, maybe you might have forgotten them, but essentially uh, we implemented the classification token right here. It's that thing that we added. So it's going to capture the context about all the, the patches inside, inside, the, inside our model. So that's what it does. So I don't know why we have an error here because that's um, if I made a mistake. Anyway, let's continue. I'll look into that. So anyway, what we're going to do is that we're going to say output equals to output, and we're going to extract the first uh, the first token from from uh, we're going to extract the first token, right? And that each token we know we spoke about this each token has a dimension of eight right we know this because this is what we have right it's like each patch has a dimension of eight right so that's why here that's why here we're taking the hidden dimension so does this make sense uh i don't know why this is complaining um i just not sure closed like so yes this will never understand why it's not but anyway that's okay can i remove it maybe you know vs code sometimes just like to do this um i just don't understand why it's not wait uh okay let, let's just try to write it from scratch uh, just don't know what happened Mm. Mm. what's going on maybe it's me i don't know but anyway this, let me just write it down uh i just don't know what's going on there so this is going to be linear um self dot um hidden dimension then we're going to have the output uh like so I think maybe it's because I missed the comma. Yes, I could have missed the comma. I think that's what was the reason. The mission is gonna be like so. Yeah, I think I might have missed this comma here. So anyway, that's fine. So we we are passing the dimension. It's expecting the dimension, and we know that yes, we're going to pass that because of the first token have this dimension, right? We 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 know this, right? This is from here. 
so here we're just saying pluck out the first token from this 50 so don't take and leave the the following ones and the pluck out first one is going to have the dimension of eight so that's fine then what we do then we gonna return we're not so we're gonna return the self dot multi perceptron we pass in the output so it knows it, it's expecting this dimension of self and it's gonna return this and the the prediction the probabilities okay and i think that's that so now i just want to get into like the the training of this uh of this thing and how the training will look like so i think for that just to make things a little bit cleaner what i would like us to do i'm gonna just import these things i don't know which one i might need but i'm just gonna import all of them so we can filter them out that's fine then what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna create this file i'm gonna call chain.py okay so <clears throat> we're gonna create this function which is gonna be dev.main so the goal here will be to import the data go through the training loop and yeah do all of this other stuff right so it's going to be transform equals to to tensor okay like so so we're gonna take the data set to tensor that's what i'm saying there so we're gonna have a train set which is equals to mnist which is a i don't know if you guys know mnist data set but for those who don't know i think you can think of it as a, it's a data set about images i think zero to nine then yeah there's there's the one for zero to nine whereby you have to classify if an image contains zero one or two or something like that then there's another i think there's uh m is 100 also uh but yeah you, you should check it out that's like uh the, the most used data set especially in deep learning field uh so especially like to kind of like test some of the ideas uh some authors use that uh so it's pretty cool so we're gonna say uh so because of it's widely used so some of the pytorch tensorflow they already have some sort of like functionality to include it so that's why here we don't have to like download a data set or do anything of that so you can just get it from here so which is pretty cool so we're gonna say that load uh equals to true then we're gonna say uh transform which is we want to transform this to tensors then uh, transform equals to transform, which is what we defined there. So <clears throat> that's for ease of use. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy this exactly the same way it is. And I'm just going to paste it here so that we don't get to make any uh, mistake. So I'm just going to say test set, which is going to be emnist, data set, train, this is going to be download but this is going to be false because we don't have to train the data set it's just for testing then now we're creating the batches because we have to do this across the train loader the loader like so then we're going to have data loader like so then we're going to pass in the train set then we're going to say shuffle we want to shuffle the training set but we don't want to shuffle the test set and then we want our batch size is going to be equals to 128 so every time we're working with batches because that's what we want to train on uh, we're gonna have I, don't, I hope you understand the concept like epoch but if you don't i will explain them to you uh the batches but yeah i'll, I'll try for me to explain them to you and the shuffle we don't want to shuffle this is just for testing so it's fine it does not matter so we have the test set and creating a batch but essentially you can think of a batch as like we're trying to uh we have a whole entire data set and we group it into a subset so that we can train much more efficient so uh if we're about to push it the whole entire data set to our model then it will crash and run out of memory so it's pretty uh a neat uh, technique that we've been using in deep learning for quite some time uh so yeah you can check it out also so um <laughs> i don't know why i'm saying you should check it out it's just something that you'll definitely do because uh 
uh, it's just like a standard, you know, because we have to like create batches when we train. Um, anyway, we do, uh, we, we want to now create a device so that we push our data set uh, into GPU if we do have a GPU. So what we're doing here is that we're checking if like we have uh, a GPU. So we're gonna say is available like so. Else, I'm just gonna do that. Then we're gonna be else, this is gonna be a CPU like so. And this will be fine. Essentially what this device will do is that it will tell us if like we have a GPU or a CPU on our device, then we're gonna have a model which is going to be equals to uh, VAT. So I'm just gonna go to our VAT, which is going to be VAT. And so that's what we're gonna, we're gonna import this, it's fine. I'm lazy to write this, but I, don't, I have to, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pass the data set, but for now I'm just gonna write this. Because it's 128 by 128, so I'm passing one image inside here. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna pass these things like so. That's fine. Figure out when we 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 have. Um, We'll figure out when we have, I think I'm just gonna import this from, uh, what is it, VAT, import VAT, uh, is that correct, uh, which is our model, so, like so. so this is just taking the VAT that we define and we're passing in the, the input here, so this is gonna be our, we can think of this as our model, so, um, and then we have these concept called n epoch so these essentially you can think of them as like um, how many times do we want to go through the data so it has been it has been known that like sometimes having high epoch can improve your model uh, accuracy so overall so we use this to say that we have like you can think of like our data set is 10,000 then we're gonna like go through that by training like maybe five times or so Okay, then we're gonna have our optimizer, which is uh, this is gonna be uh, the chain loop. So, I'm just gonna do this. Uh, so, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna have optimizer, right? Optimizer equals to Adam. Then we're gonna have model dot parameters. And we're gonna say uh, learning rate, is learning rate. Um, getting an error here because there's no equals to. Model that parameter. Then we have learning rate equals to learning rate that we defined. Then we're gonna have criterion. Cross entropy. Yeah, because of its a uh, multi classification. So we're gonna have cross entropy. Then we're gonna say for epoch. In a uh, trench, we're gonna pass the number of epochs. Uh, and we're gonna say description equals to training. Okay, so that's that. Then we're gonna say training us. So after after each epoch, we wanna capture the last. Um, so for batch in TQDM, these are just things just to capture, just to go for logs and stuff like that. So we're gonna pass in the train loader inside here. And then we're gonna have a description to say that, um, so this is this actually help us to kind of like see, you know, like I said, logs and stuff like that. So we can write something like epoch, then we can say epoch uh, plus one. So in training, right? Yeah, so that's fine. Um, we can have an x and y, which is going to be equal to a uh, batch, like so. Okay, 
Um, does that make sense? That's the first question, which is that we have a trend loader. Yeah. So uh, I wanna repeat that essentially this uh, this chain loader has output and input. So that's why here we have X and, and Y. So that's why sometimes I, I, I don't like I don't like such data set because when you're trying to teach or maybe explain it to someone, they can't see, they don't understand like if this is a what kind of vector or is a matrix, what's what's really going on, right? So, but you can think of like, we have image and output and that output, I think is represented as a, um, that Y is represented as a one hot encoder because we have like, we have like, we have zero to nine that we're trying to classify zero to nine uh, values. So we can think of like the zero, zero one and then weights, where it's correct, it's going to be one, and the rest of the others is going to be zero. Something like that, if I'm not sure. yeah, something like that, if I'm not mistaken. But then the X will then be the pixels of the of the image. Because of this, in this case, it's zero and one. So it's going to have the dimension of one by 28 by 28. Um, yeah. And where it, like, there's a black thing, I think it's going to be one. Where there's white, I think it's going to be zero because of yeah that's what it, i think it is going to happen but that's that um i hope that kind of like gives you uh, a better perspective i'm sorry because i do understand that this is hard to understand for some of you because you can't see the data like it can be quite confusing uh, but what we can think of is that we take these images we convert them into numbers and those numbers we just get them here but because of this is a supervised so each each image has like its, uh, uh, what is it, label, okay? So that's that. I'll try to maybe show you like the data set after I'm done with this so that you understand. Uh, I think that will be better so that you can see actually how it looks like. So what we have here is that uh, Y to device, then we have, uh, what is it, X to device, we have Y to, to device, right? So we can think of like we're sending our data set to GPU. If you have a GPU, if it's fine, it's gonna be in CPU, so it's fine. So it's just fine. Then we say Y hat, which is our predictions. Then we say model, which is gonna take X. Okay. Um, loss is gonna be equals to criterion Y hat, uh, Y hat, which is Y. So we're trying to see how far we are from the prediction. So ideally, the prediction of the model should match the actual value of the, given the image, the model tells us that this is a prediction. So we're trying to see if the model got it using the loss function called cross entropy. And we're gonna say train our loss, which we're gonna say plus equals to loss dot, dot touch, okay. Then we're gonna say dot CPU um, dot I am. I don't know if you guys like want to really enjoy these type of videos, you know, like uh, so uh, just let me know uh, so that I can continue to roll them if you guys find them helpful, right? So um, we're gonna say optimizer zero grad then we gonna say uh what is it not that backwards right then we optimize update the weights optimizer but step am i making a mistake i am optimizer optimizer nope for the spelling optimizer optimizer dot step i think it's like that so that's that but now I think we're gonna print the epoch after each epoch. We're gonna print that we're done with, e with this epoch. So it's gonna be epoch. Um, then we're gonna say uh, epoch, which is that. And we're just gonna say plus one divisible by a number of number of epoch. Just another in our locks, and we're gonna print. 
uh, last. So you know when it trains in the, it trains for quite some time, right? But you, when you see these logs, you can actually be able to see that okay, the model is training, the model is converging, so all of this stuff. So without doing these type of logs, the model can train for hours, and you wouldn't be able to know if like it's converging and the model is actually making progress. So having these uh, print statement, it's actually quite an um, a handy a handy thing that we do in deep learning overall. So you will learn about this, and you will see this a lot. Uh, especially when you you kind of like go through this journey uh, so yeah um so we're gonna have with touch dot no grid i think it's, we don't want to accumulate the gradients when we testing the model so i'm just gonna write test here so that you can see so i'm just gonna say no test no accumulation of gradients so it's gonna be test because we're just testing the stuff we're gonna say correct and uh, total equals to 0, 0. Then we're gonna say test loss equals to uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. Then we're gonna say for batch like so uh, in TQBM, we're gonna say test loader, right? Java data set from the test. Then we're gonna say description equals to testing so the model has been trained so the model should be good right now right so now we're testing if like it can be able to really 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 get this things correct right so we're gonna do that um i'm just gonna use tab 9 because uh it seems to be fast so <clears throat> we're gonna pass in the input then we get the output then we pass that we calculate the loss uh, we still need to calculate the loss because we're testing and we want to see like how far off the model is right then we say test uh, plus equals to we're doing the same thing that we did uh, then we're just going to say loss um, dot detach i think dot detach uh, then we're going to say dot cpu right then we're going to say dot item. Then we divide by the length of the test line. Test loader. Yeah. XO. So, yeah. This is looking good. So, we just have to say correct plus equals to touch. Um, touch sum. And we're gonna say touch dot ah, max. So what you're thinking we're doing here is that we're essentially taking the maximum um the maximum value from our prediction. So you can think of these as like um logits. So we have like these values, but we want the maximum one because the maximum one that means is the correct one. So we're taking the index of that. Okay, then we have dimension equals to one. And I'm gonna say if this equals to y, right? Then I'm gonna say dot detach. So this is gonna be a profile, but we're summing that, then it's gonna be it's gonna be treated as a value, right? So I'm gonna say the CPU, like so, and this is gonna be that item. Like so, okay, that's that. Um, so we can say total plus total plus plus the length of x. And when we're done, we can actually print uh, f to test uh, loss. So we can say uh, test loss 2.f 2f to decimal place. I think that's fine. I think that's fine that's okay that's our training loss 
So we'll try to train this and see how it works. Um, yeah, let's do that. Uh, so I've already trained this, guys, and I got so many bugs, as you can see from my terminal. Uh, yeah, it's just some silly bugs that I got. But um, yeah, but I, I, I managed to fix them. For instance, what happened was that within that touch that tensor, we're supposed to pass two, we pass two values, but instead of one, so that's fixed. So I'll, I'll actually leave this code for you guys so that you can reference, but that's the only thing. I think also here, we made a mistake around the image of dimension. So we fixed this, uh, but yeah, but then we trained and it looks like everything worked well as the text accuracy was uh, was quite not, not fantastic, but also it was acceptable. So which means that the model is working fine and the whole entire thing that we did was working fine. So I'll leave the code for you guys. Um, and yeah, and I really appreciate it. If you did enjoy this, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.